Welcome to Mama Fuel, the podcast that fuels every mama's heart, soul, mind, and body, and hopefully sparks a few dreams along the way. I'm Ann Ferguson, Chief Nurturer and Mama Mentor at the Centered Mama Project, and your host for this podcast. I'll be sharing real, raw, and often funny conversations with beautiful mamas from around the world to remind you that you're not alone and that you're doing amazingly on this wild journey of shepherding small humans as they make their way on our beautiful planet. Let's get started. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Mama Feel the Podcast. My name is Anne Ferguson, and I am your host today and all the days of Mama Fuel. My guest this week is a very, very talented, beautiful, funny, and real woman named Leela Bunce, who is a performer. She is an actor. She is a laughter yoga teacher. She is also a burlesque performer in the most subversive, funny way that I have ever heard. And our conversation happened when Leela was in her farmhouse in the countryside outside Glastonbury in England. And unfortunately, the internet connection wasn't that phenomenal between us. However, I've decided to publish this podcast episode anyway, because our conversation was, I feel, very important. We talked about being real and how when someone is real and raw and goes beyond the usual surface, I'm fine, I'm fine, yeah, everything's fine, that it gives other people permission to do the same. And it's something that Leela has seen in the laughter yoga groups that she leads. It's something that she has seen in the performing that she does. And it is incredibly powerful. It happened even with both of us when we were speaking during this podcast recording we both had moments of just feeling that, oh, yeah, okay. Whew. You too. I have space and permission now to feel this way, to just release and relax and be real. So I will ask for your indulgence on the technical front because there are some pauses where Leela's trying to figure out what I've asked her because she couldn't hear everything and a few time delays. But bear with us because the conversation is so beautiful that I really know that it's worth sharing. I can't wait to hear what you think about it. And to tell me, please head over to thecenteredmamaproject.com forward slash Facebook. And that's where the conversation will be going on about this podcast and all the other episodes every week as usual. Looking forward to see you there. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to today's episode of Mama Fuel, the podcast. My name is Anne Ferguson. I, as ever, am your host. And today we have an extra special tickly, giggly guest with us. Her name is Leela Bunce. She is a performer in all sorts of ways. She leads laughter workshops. She is a burlesque performer. She is does theater. That I don't know what she doesn't do. She does all the things. And at the same time, and equally importantly, she's a mama of two beautiful, beautiful little boys, one really little one. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see that he's present for this podcast interview. There's his little face. And if you're listening, um, we might have a little, there he is. Hi. We might have a little visit. We might have an auditory visit. So that would be fun as well as, you know, mama life kicks in. So Leela and I met um, in the online world through um, a group that we were both part of that was looking at mindset and how we, how we think about life and what might be possible. And I immediately was completely drawn to her energy and her smile and her bright eyes and, and her ability to just go out and do stuff and keep this really strong professional current running at the same time as she was raising her little boy. So I'm going to stop talking about you like you're not here, Leela, because you're listening to me as I introduce you and say hello and welcome and thank you so much <laughs> to you and your little man for joining us. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, I've, it's so I've started bouncing on my gymbal because he's started to stir because he knows he's being talked about. So. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the baby, yeah. The baby spotlight yeah. is shining yeah. his way. Oh, well, yeah, you know, if, if he, he's uh, already been on stage. So. Excellent. Yes, both in belly and out, I suspect, no? Yeah. I've got yeah. to train him, start him young. <laughs> yeah. like well, you know, part, it's part of the life, right? It's part of the life. So tell us a little bit about what your life looks like right now. Oh, I'm losing you. 
Ah, we've got, so Leela is in the countryside. So sometimes the internet is not phenomenal. In the middle of nowhere. Okay. So my question was, what does your life look like right now? Um, from the outside, it, it probably looks very blissful and lovely and calm. I live, I live in the, on a beautiful farm in the middle of the countryside in Somerset um, in a town called Glastonbury, which is very famous for mm-hmm. its um, festival. Yes. And uh, it's the most amazing, weird and wonderful town full of uh, all sorts of amazing, interesting stuff. Lots of witches and wizards and pagans and druids. And uh, yeah, it's a magic place. And um, where we live is, is, is beautiful. It's, it's idyllic. And, um, you know, here I am with my two boys, um, my partner, um, who grows organic vegetables and it's all very wholesome and very lovely. So from the outside, it looks beautiful and it is, and I'm not denying that. And also absolute chaos at all times (laughs) (laughs) and kind of, you know, utterly bonkers and, um, and everything in between. So, yeah. Still waters run deep, I, I will say. <laughs> As it is with, with all months, I think. It's that kind of, yeah, it's all great. Ah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, that's, it's, a, it's a, a really interesting place to start, actually, because... As someone who sits in equally idyllic, distant Switzerland, it's true that the little bit that I see of what's going on in your life is your smooshy, gorgeous little little guy. Who is, how old is he? He's four months. Four um, months. He's, he's, a, he's a right chunk. He's enormous. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you're, you're squishy, beautiful, chunky baby boy and his big brother who is now, I want to say three, but that's not right. He's four. Four. Yeah. yeah. So you've got... Yeah, he's four and a half. Two boys, so that's a lot. And what you've just touched on is really key to a lot of the conversations that I have, and that is from the outside. What it looks like on the outside and what it looks like on the inside. And on an earlier episode of Mama Fuel with Edie Hoffman, we were talking about the energy that's required to maintain a public persona, your public face, and then what actually goes on when you come into your home and you can drop that public face, the actual energy that's consumed. It's a, a podcast all about what uh, cognitive health and how you keep your brain healthy and your cognition as sharp as it can be, which obviously when you have a newborn <laughs> is a little tricky because you're just not sleeping, right? It's just the hours of sleep are interrupted probably and over a long period of time. Um, we've certainly just dipped back into interrupted sleep with one of our kids and wow it's a lot <laughs> you know eight or nine years on you sort of are yeah. not yeah you're not ready for it anymore and it's and it's really disruptive and I would love yeah. to know what you know ha- do you do you make a do you try to make it look good on the outside or is it just this is the stuff I'm willing to share and I'm not really willing to share the other stuff or are there people with whom that public face drops and it's just well this is life oh repeat that last bit I'm sorry no it's okay it's okay we are it's the realities of living in rural life right um my question was yeah (laughs) <laughs> do you um do you is it conscious that you have this public face of everything's fine yeah we're all good yeah and then when you are with maybe some other people you drop it all or is it just what what makes that happen I um if, if I don't answer quite correctly it's because I, I I I didn't hear all of what you said but from what I from what I think you are I, I guess it's um I mean, gosh, I, I think it's true all around the world, but I know us Brits are very good at <laughs> putting the mask on. And, you know, that, that thing, I used to teach English as a foreign language. And so many of the students I taught had been taught that if you say, how are you? Then the correct response is, fine, thank you. How are you? And that's what, that's what you say. That's what you should say. You know, that's, that's all. That's, that's the only thing you can say. I think we're very good at that and what I'm really keen on now with with all of my work and with with my life 
is is how to oh, how to drop that mask and be really authentic and not be afraid to be oh messy and kind of hideous <laughs> in a beautiful way and um you just be really true to what's going on and you know to to not reply I'm fine thank you if I'm not fine thank you um and a lot of my performance work again is around that so a lot of my burlesque work um you know burlesque you, you, some of your 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 viewers might have heard of burlesque and might think of it in terms of you know Dita Von Tees and these very kind of beautiful glamorous vintage uh, performers which which a lot of burlesque is and my style of burlesque is is not that <laughs> and um, burlesque you know traditionally means parody and it means to parody something so my take on burlesque has always been playing with notions of um, femininity and you know uh, kind of power uh, in, in women in society and then um expectations of beauty and you know i'm aware that an audience expects me in a burlesque show to get on stage and do something do something beautiful and and i like to turn that on its head and not quite give them what they expect um as a kind of oh oh right okay uh and that feels very important kind of in all aspects of my life at the moment is, is how to, and that since, you know, becoming a mother as well, of, um, it's just too much energy to keep that, to keep that mask up. It's, oh my goodness, it's just relentlessly exhausting. <laughs> so why not just drop it, you know, and, um, and how can we kind of support each other to, um, you know, for that to be okay to, um, you know that the kind of the idyllic Facebook life that that people see is is yeah. How can we um I don't know make it, make it all much more truthful and, and um it's always so oh you know when somebody does and when someone kind of really expresses what's true and what's going on for them oh gosh it's such a relief um yeah. So I'm really keen to <laughs> to do that as well and to, to, yeah, in all aspects of my life. When you say that about that oh, feeling, what is that? Is that because it gives, implicitly gives the other person or the other people present permission to also drop it? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It, yeah, it, when someone is really... Um, really honest about what's going on you know and, and voices it it oh you can just feel a kind of oh in the room you know of, of okay then yeah then it's okay for me to do the same and I I, I really discovered this like it's like I've experienced this for the first time you know it sounds awful as a British person because <laughs> I, I, I had such a kind of stereotypical middle class uh, British upbringing, I think, of like, no, just, you know, be kind of, ah, people, have a cup of tea. <laughs> yes, nice cup of tea, it'll all be fine. Um, and I started doing um, clown training, which is something I've always wanted to do. And finally, finally, I, I, I did it. And it was the most kind of blessed relief because clowns just get it wrong all the time. And express absolutely what's going on for them and it was the best therapy I've ever had because suddenly oh okay it's all right to you know to really kind of express and show you know oh my goodness I really messed that up or I, I'm not very good at this or this is going really wrong and this is you know and ah and to you know to to really really express that on stage in front of a group of people was Oh my goodness! It was it was like um, oh, the floodgates open. Uh, yeah, and enormously um, oh, just just such a great relief. Yeah, and I, I I did a lot of clown stuff in Italy, and of course Italians are very. Oh, there's a tractor. There's a tractor going past my window at the moment. Sorry, proper <laughs> living on a farm. <laughs> um, 
yeah, Italians, of course, very different and much more um, exuberant and more expressive. And yeah, I think the combination of, of clown training and clown training in Italy around Italians was just fabulous. <laughs> mm. uh, was enormously helpful. And what 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 is the <clears throat> sorry? What is the vulnerability? What is the risk of showing that not everything is okay or showing it doesn't even need to be. I feel like it doesn't, one of the, one of the fears that we have is that we'll be a downer for other people or that we will be viewed as very negative and it doesn't, reality doesn't mean negative. It just means real. Like it just is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And it's, it's not like, um, I think it's just really um, being true to whatever's there, you know, and it, it's like it, it, it might be sadness, it might be um, guilt, but it might be huge joy as well, you know, and there's also a kind of quite a taboo around being really happy and, you know, and really kind of, oh, um, <laughs> Instead, it's, you know, just keep with them. Fine, thank you. How are you? Rather than, <laughs> oh, my God, I'm so... Uh, so, yeah, it's, I think it's that um, just allowing, you know, that whole humanness and all of ourselves uh, to, to be seen, uh, which, yeah, which is exposing, you know, and uh, puts us, I, I suppose, puts us in a kind of vulnerable position because it's it's something that, here, you know, I, 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 I don't see rather, it's, you know, here it's um, not something that people do enough. So in that respect, you know, it kind of, it's like you're taking that risk um, mm. when others maybe aren't or can't or, but yeah, it just, it just helps everyone, you know, I think that, that kind of real expression of, um, of all of ourselves is just magic. Oh, it's magic. And it's often hilarious, you know, as a as a, um, a a performer when someone's on stage and they are maybe something goes wrong and they acknowledge that it's gone wrong. Oh my goodness, it's it's hilarious, you know. People are in their beautiful kind of crazy ah selves, messy, all sorts of everything selves. It's just beautiful and funny and magic and oh yeah one of the things that you do is you do laughter workshops right Mm. and I I would love to attend a laughter workshop with you how how do you find that I mean given the cultural context that you live in you live in the UK and the safest emotions and the, the the range with which one is encouraged to emote is relatively restricted and it's quite beige, isn't it? Like, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, feeling Very a little off. Yeah. Feeling a little off today. Meanwhile, you know, you've you've just had pneumonia or something major happened. You know, you've lost a loved one. Oh, yeah. Just you know, feeling a little off. Um, how do how do you how do you take people from that? to getting them involved in laughter. I I assume that if they're registering for a laughter workshop, they have a degree of openness to it in the first place. They're not coming, kicking and screaming. But what happens? That must be really magical to see that unlock in people. Yeah, it is. Oh gosh, it's just wonderful. And again, it's that, oh, thing. Oh yeah. How lovely. Uh, You know, everyone that, is 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 has been just holding it together and everyone's doing you know the start of a session it's it you know it, you can kind of feel that anticipation and that oh, okay yeah but um and then by the end it's just all crumbled away and everyone's just kind of rolling around on the floor laughing and it, oh my goodness it's just magic and it's i think it's that it's like something overtakes something overtakes the mind, you know, that's the, the way that the laughter workshops work is that um, there's no humour, you know, there's no comedy. I, I, God, I'm the worst person at telling jokes. And it's, it, you know, it's using the breath and using the body and starting that way. And um, the body just wants to be laughing, you know, that, that innate kind of natural, uh, 
uh, inner child kind of energy there is just oh, looking for opportunities to play and to to laugh and you know it's a very natural it's like it's a very natural thing to laugh and it's kind of um it's a it's an unnatural thing to not laugh really you know it's it's a very a very natural human thing so um so that's what we do you know using the breath and the body to to just kind of shake everything out get everything moving and then it's so contagious you know if you're in a room full of people laughing you have to try quite hard to kind of poker face it uh, entirely <laughs> and I love it because sometimes you know I run workshops where people have come of their own choice and then sometimes I go into companies or I um, you know go into community groups or something where people either haven't known what's coming or um, you know that it's like next on the schedule we'll be doing some laughing and you can see this <gasps> um, and I've even had you know people quite kind of confrontationally like go on then you know go on then make me laugh or oh no you're not going to get me laughing no no way and I know I love those moments because I know that those people um for one thing maybe need it the most Mm. and also um they're the ones at the end who are always laughing the loudest you know and it's it's oh it's just amazing it's it's wonderful um you know to, to have a kind of group of people if I run a public session people of all different ages you know different nationalities um laughing together it's such a leveler you know there's no um there's no hierarchy there's no you know there's it's just it's just a, an incredible kind of human experience of um uh, yeah it's just magic I love it Mm-hmm. I love it too. I really do want to come to one of your one of your laughter workshops. We'll make it happen at some stage. How do you incorporate that into your mothering? I the story I imagine is that it's really easy for you. Um, and I grew up in a home where one of my parents was extremely serious. Laughing was it was it was my dad, and and the only time I ever saw my father really laughing was when he was with his little brother, my uncle, who was instantly my favorite person, probably in part for that reason. Um, and, and we would see him like once a year. And those were the times where I would see my father literally laughing to the point of tears. And so for me, as much as, you know, laughing is, is part of life, it isn't that frequent really like a really good laugh for me is it's hard to muster. And my husband, on the other hand, is just a, he'll laugh till he's crying constantly and the kids are the same. And so we do find ways to, 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 to live that joyous, amazing experience, but it's not like the hardwiring is not in my case to just be constantly giggling. So I imagine that for you, that piece is a lot easier or more accessible as a mom. Is that right? It's in some ways, but it, interestingly, I mean, I got into laughter and running laughter workshops because I wasn't laughing enough. And, um, you know, because I'd had a, a, a really kind of tough time after university. Um, and, and I noticed again, that after I had my first son, I just moved to the countryside and I didn't know anyone. And, you know, I was, I was kind of pretty isolated. And again, it's like, again, I stopped laughing. Mm. Um, and it's, it is something that, uh, you know, I've used as a really powerful tool for myself uh, to, you know, to kind of remind myself um, to, to keep tapping into that, you know, that, that part of me. Um, because, yeah, you know, I, I think I, I, had serious parents and um <laughs> uh we didn't laugh very much uh in my house when I was growing up and so that's what I was used to but I always knew you know I was always the kind of the class clown and it's like no but that's not that's not me you know that that person who doesn't laugh and he doesn't play and is, that's not me that's not real that's just what I've learned and so it's been this kind of journey of unlearning you know, unlearning the seriousness. And again, you know, after I had my first son, that feeling of, okay, whoa, I'm in charge of a small person. I've got a few mm-hmm. person's life. 
my goodness, I've got to do this right. I've got to. Uh, and again, got very serious. And, it, it, you know, so again, it's been this, this process of unlearning, you know, the need to the need to do it right and the need to be good at things. And, you know, like he's four and a half, he's, he's still here. <laughs> like, uh, you know, it's, um, uh, yeah. It, and so over that time, uh, I've kind of re-tapped into that, I think. And then, um, yeah, and it's, a, it's an enormously useful tool to, to help with that because you don't, you don't have to be feeling happy or you don't have to have anything to laugh about, you know, with, with laughter yoga and that, that kind of laughter, um, like a laughter workout, really. Mm-hmm. It's like it, it, it shifts, you know, it, using the breath and the body kind of shifts your mindset um, just by physically, <laughs> just by physically laughing, you know, mm-hmm. rather than having to have something to laugh about, which, you know, some days it's like you can look absolutely everywhere and you won't find anything. <laughs> so, um, yeah, kind of choosing, choosing to laugh anyway. And, yeah, little ones are great. But they're, they're, they're very funny. And, yeah, they're, they're very useful. Um, useful, that sounds awful. But very kind of helpful reminder as well to, um, yeah, kind of keep laughing and not take, not take things so seriously. You said something that has just twigged a huge realization for me again, because I've had this before, but I keep forgetting, which was after Carolina was born. So my first daughter, I had very, very bad postnatal depression and serious PTSD from an abdominal surgery I'd had as as a teenager and obviously hadn't worked through because I was 13 and who has gynecological surgery when they're 13? Not a lot of people. Not a lot of women, I should specify. Probably not a lot of men either <laughs> have gynecological surgery. Anyway, um, and and so one of the, the what what happened when I met Carolina and they put her on my chest was this absolutely crushing sense of I can't get this wrong. I can't make any mistakes. I must do this right. She is so frail and so tiny because she was born late and had lost a lot of her baby weight, so she was quite. She was, she was great. She was super tall, but really had, had, you know, been there. She'd been, she'd been cooking too long. And, and this, this looking at this little being and thinking, oh, there's no margin for error. There's no margin. Like things became really serious really quickly. And it's taken a long time for me to realize that actually if I, if I mess it up, it's okay. And we often, and I've mentioned this a few times on the podcast in previous episodes, I will often say to the kids, when I was little, I thought my parents were perfect. Good thing you girls don't have that issue, right? Because, because we talk often about <laughs> getting things wrong and mixing things up and making mistakes and learning from what may be a failure. And to hear you talking about that, you know, I ha- you have this child and now two and, and you must get it right, is such an immense amount of pressure. And, and I think that we as mamas can really easily, it's one of the myriad ways that we lose ourselves, isn't it? Because now suddenly you feel that, you know, I can, I, as I'm talking about it, I feel my shoulders getting square and my, you know, my bum tightening, like I must sit up straight and must, you know, just hold all the things together. and. And actually, what I think is so appealing about the laughter workout and the idea of prompting that is that permission to just, permission to release, permission to just be human. Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah. Again, you know, when you were speaking just then, I had that real, oh, thing. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Um, yeah, and it is like you say, it is a kind of physical. Oh God, I have to. Yeah. It's yeah, a bracing. I can't relax. I can't kind of. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and it's utterly exhausting. Yeah, I mean, after even my first boy, definitely, I, 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 I fell into. I think it. I think it must have been postnatal depression. Um, um, you know, and that combined with not sleeping, and you know, all of that. It's, gosh, just. Wow. you know it's, it's taken a long time to um to feel you know myself kind of coming back 
And with this one, I think that was my biggest fear before I had him of like, oh gosh, what if that happens again? Mm -hmm. You know, and to be trying to be really kind of conscious of, um, yeah, conscious of, 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 of keeping breathing, I suppose, mm -hmm. keeping breathing, keep laughing, like um, uh, not trying to do it all myself. You know, I think that's the, the I had this feeling of, right, I should know what I'm doing and I should, should be able to do this, you know, but I've never done it before, you know, and, and I actually said that to Eden the other day. I said to him, you know, I've never, I've never been a parent before. So, um, you know, and then he actually said to me later on, mummy, you do not know what you're doing. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. Thanks for the reminder. But, um, but it's true. I don't know what I'm doing, really. Just, you know, muddling along. None of us do. And we all are muddling along. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So question for you, for anyone who's listening for whom this concept of laughter workshops or um, being able to, to do some kind of a, an exercise to get you into a different headspace, to get you into seeing possibility, to get, because that's what happens, isn't it? You start to see the world goes from dark and narrow, which is what I remember my postnatal depression as being literally, I, was, I remember one day sliding down the hospital room wall onto the floor and I, I actually was convinced I was falling into a hole. Like there was, there was an opening in the floor and I was going down and I would never be able to get out. I literally didn't know how to claw my way out. And this was only, you know, day four or five after she was born and it lasted months. And um, the idea of being able to go from that narrow and dark and stifling and airless to same person, same space, but literally your mind just opening up. I, I saw this, this thing yesterday um, about expandable houses that you can set up your expandable house in 10 minutes. They have these accordion steel beams where it comes in a little rectangular box. Have you seen it? Little rectangular box. And then it expands into this massive thing. And that's how, that's how doing something like any kind of mindset work or any kind of, of laughter work, I think... I think it sounds very thinky, doesn't it? My, my, my experience of it in my body is that it literally opens up the brain and it, people who are listening and not watching, I keep opening like my hands in front of my forehead really wide because it's this, it's a lightening and an airing and uh, a brightening, isn't it? An opening of space. Mm. So for someone who's, who's not used to doing this or who hasn't practiced it, do you have any suggestions or I hadn't thought about this. This is totally not premeditated. Otherwise I would have asked you beforehand, but is there anything that we can do at home if we're in that funk and we've been looking high and low and no amount of silly cat videos on Facebook is going to get us smiling? What, what can we do? Are there any things, any techniques that we can try? Mm. Yeah, I think there's lots of different ways. Um, the, 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 the important thing to remember, like with love yoga, which is, which is what I teach, is, is that um, the, the, body, the body can't tell the difference between um, real spontaneous laughter and kind of simulated laughter. It has the same effect on the body. And so that's really important because it's, you know, you, you don't have to be feeling happy or, uh, you don't have to have a sense of humour, you know, for it to, for it to work, but, but kind of have a really beneficial effect. So something as simple as taking a deep breath and then on the out breath, ha, 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 you know, <laughs> like a tiny little thing like that, you know, will have a, a, a small kind of chemical effect on the body. You know, something will change in the body. Um, and of course, you know, when you're breathing, taking in lots of oxygen and that, <sighs> that is, is like a little release. And so it's kind of any then scale of that, you know. Um, uh, so it might just be a <laughs> or it could be a really, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's however you're feeling, whatever you can manage in that moment. Just, but just to remember that the tiniest little will have a, a positive effect on the body, you know, even if that's all you can, can deal with <laughs> in that moment. And then um, 
And then another lovely thing to do, um, you know, if you're able to with kids, maybe once the kids have kind of gone to sleep, if they ever do go to sleep, um, is just to, to lay on the floor um, and again, take some deep breaths and just <laughs> again <laughs> and kind of see where it takes you. And if you just end up staying with the <laughs> that's absolutely fine. If it bubbles up into real kind of <laughs> which which often it does because you kind of on the floor you're allowing yourself to just block you know for everything to kind of relax and then the laughter the <laughs> it's kind of it's like it's kind of shaking stuff you know it's shaking the body um and releasing little traps bits of tension and stress and blah, blah, blah. and for them to kind of bubble up ah, often takes you by surprise you know it might turn into laughter it might also turn into tears you know because there's a very fine line between the two you know I often describe it as, as an onion you know and you you often have a layer of laughter and then there's some tears in there as well you know because that's something else the body wants to release or you might need to have a big ah, kind of cathart <laughs> um and, and then you might find some more laughter you know so it's um uh if you sometimes people say yes but what will my neighbors think <laughs> then a great thing to do if you can is to just um uh pop up in your car somewhere and you know your, your car is the most amazing private space um so that's a really brilliant one as well if you're kind of if you're able to park somewhere and just have a good old ah ha 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 you can make loads of noise in your car and um yeah and you don't really have any neighbors that's so, um, such a good idea my neighbors are quite used to it though so yeah and, and the way i see it as well is is uh, you know if people hear you laughing what a great gift you know if, if, if you hear someone laughing chances are you will kind of <laughs> even if you don't know what they're laughing about it's so contagious that gosh isn't there's nothing wrong with hearing people laughing you know what a kind of what a gift <laughs> it is yeah, it's gift. such such a gift so you were talking earlier about um you know we meant we touched on this idea that when you become a mama many of us <clears throat> sorry revert into being super serious and or revert we we switch into being super serious we're now responsible adults who are supposed to know what we're doing and we also often especially yeah, we're grown ups, which is so not like <laughs> I keep looking at my kids and going, I don't know where the grown ups are because <laughs> like if I have to be the grown up, ah! um, and and so I've just lost my train of thought. Ah, yes, that there it is. It's back. Thank you. Um, you have this amazing performing side to yourself, right? That was where I was going. That we often lose bits of ourselves, and this is a this is a a really important topic to me because I lost big, big, big bits of myself and they dropped off and shriveled up and, and kind of frittered away. And now in my 40s, almost mid 40s, I'm, I'm calling them back in and have recently slightly timidly started talking about a program that I'm offering, which is called Illuminate. And the idea is to have us stepping out of the shadows. And it's very apt to be talking to you about it and to talk about it for the first time on the podcast with you, because it's really stepping out of the, the, out of the wings, right? If you think about a stage, you're standing in the wings and you're doing all the things to keep the stars of the show, your kids on the stage, lit, made up, dressed, fed, rehearsed, slept, Blah, 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 and, and you're there sort of in the wings, bedraggled and, and exhausted because, you know, as I am today, thanks to a few nights of <laughs> not enough sleep, courtesy of waking in the middle of the night, children. And, and so you're out there in, the, in the, the wings of your life and you don't give yourself the air and the light and the space and the shining and the bigness. So as a performer, you you actually live the 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 need to physically embody what I'm talking about and illuminate, which is to step onto the stage, to step into the light, to be seen, to be heard, to make noise, especially as you parody what people think burlesque is, or as you bring that that turning on its headness into all of the the performance that you do. Has that been easy for you? Is it something you're constantly working on or is it just such a second nature because of how you've chosen to 
to show up in the world. Oh, sorry, I have to repeat that last bit. You were chopping up a little bit. Uh, it's okay. No, I was just saying, is it second nature to you to, to just, is it such a second nature because it's what you do to step forward and be seen and be heard? Or is it something you need to keep working on? I think it's, a, yeah, I, th- I think from an early age, I, I, I realized, you know, this is, this is what I'm here for. Like I was always a, a real clown and um, it wasn't very encouraged you know, by my, my parents, my dad especially, it was very much like, yes, that's not a viable career choice. Being a you know, you need, to, you need to be a teacher or a lawyer or something sensible. And I tried to do that. I tried to be sensible and it didn't work. <laughs> and thankfully, I came back to, you know, being a clown. That is, that is my truth. That's, um, oh, yeah. And that, that's been, performing has been, um my my little nugget of sanity <laughs> you know over the last um you know few years and it, i noticed the difference in um after i had my first son you know and i just moved here and i didn't know people and i wasn't working and i wasn't being creative and i think that's what that's what kind of tipped me over into uh depression and anxiety especially because that creative energy was there but I wasn't using it and so you know that when energy's there and you're not using it it kind of becomes something else it becomes worry or it becomes you know um stress or you know and and so this time around I've been again being really conscious of okay I need to keep I need to keep that that constant I need to be doing something uh for myself you know I need to be performing so you know, I was back on stage. He was six weeks. He was six weeks old, and uh, I had my first show. And he was literally, you know, he was on me in the sling until like five minutes before I went on stage. And then I quickly fed him, handed him over to his dad, went on stage. Then in the interval, came back off, fed him again, changed his nappy, <laughs> and then kind of back on stage. And it was absolutely bonkers. Like it was, it was crazy and exhausting. And and but it was so much what I needed, you know, because it was that it was that piece of me you know that gosh like you say I mean when you were talking just then it was you know I I, oh god I I related so much and I I just felt oh this 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 welling up of oh yeah because it's so easy to, to yeah to lose ourselves and to lose pieces of ourselves um and also to just feel, you know, when you become a mother, you change, you know, you, you become different as well. So suddenly it's kind of, who the hell am I? Yeah. <laughs> you know, because it's bits that you feel like you've lost and then there's these new bits. It's like, okay, but I, I, okay, who are you? Uh, and trying to kind of, um, what's that word? Trying to, hello, you. Trying to find a way through it all is, is such a process and such a journey. and. Um, Oh yeah, it's always woken up for years. Hello. Um, and to the bouncing again. Um, so it, it is, it is I was talking to someone recently about how it's a real um I'm one of those people, it's utterly ridiculous, where um I could be on stage in front of, you know, thousand, two thousand people, absolutely fine, kind of, you know, and doing burlesque. So it might be that sometimes I'm not you know, wearing a huge amount. <laughs> uh, but I'll be in the changing rooms at the swimming pool, you know, getting changed under my towel <laughs> in a really kind of ridiculously British way. Like, oh, goodness me, I can't. No, oh, it's, it's utterly, it's ridiculous. All these kind of, uh, on stage, you know, it's like, oh, okay. Like, this is my, yeah, this is my kind of little moment of freedom. And literally a moment of, freedom of hands because it's like the one moment where I don't have a baby <laughs> to hold. Yeah. Uh, it's so interesting. And, and what a, what a beautiful experience to have the support of your partner and to be able to have your kids in a way involved because Eden also is, he's traveled with you. You've been to down to London. You've, you know, you've done some traveling with one and both of your boys as you're continuing to 
mm-hmm. to, to feed all the parts of you. So you're, you're nurturing the parts, you're nurturing them and yourself as a mother, but you're also, thank God, I, I mean, I'm celebrating you so much. I can't even, I want to jump through the screen and, and give you the biggest hug and, and do like a cheerleader dance because it's so, it's sadly, I think, quite uncommon for mamas, especially of littles, to, 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 take, to take that space, to step away and go, you know what, actually for me to not completely lose the plot, I need to step away and be me without expectations of, you know, kids and without needing to show up in any specific way as a partner or as an employee or as anything else. This is me in my fullest expression. In your case, it's on, it's literally on a stage, which as I said, could not be more appropriate for what I'm talking about now. Um, so thank you for that. Didn't even think (laughs) that wasn't premeditated either, but, but how like, Oh yes, Leela. Yes. I'm celebrating you so much for doing that. And, and so in your corner for you to keep doing that because it's beautiful to see how you just, even just from a distance and in a very superficial contact way, just to see you like you, you just, it's like you just plug yourself into the source and just, you have this huge wash of energy. It looks like. It, it, yeah, it's it, it's a. Uh, it, I think it's it's like a feeling of. Um, I, it's like I have to do it. I have to do it. Otherwise, I I, I just kind of fade. You know, and this is what I've realised is. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's like I don't have a choice. You know, I mm. I kind of. Um, I have to do it. The boys have to come. You know, we have to find a way. Um, uh, otherwise I just get, I, I get sad and I get kind of, uh, um, and yeah, and that's been, and that's been a, a real blessing to realize, you know, to, to realize that I don't have a choice, but to, 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 to follow my truth, you know, because, uh, yeah, I, it's, I have to do it. And, you know, I want to show them, um, I, I want to show them that, you know, I want them to kind of come and see what mummy does and to, um, to be part of it. And I'm very lucky, you know, I'm lucky with, um, mm. with my partner and how, and how we are. And I know a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of mums don't have that support and don't have that network. Um, and so I'm, I'm, you know, really lucky and very kind of grateful to, to be able to, to do that. Um, and it's also, you know, it's like, I don't want it to seem like it's, um, you know, it's all, it's all very slick operation. It's utter chaos, you know, it's absolute madness. And it's, um, oh gosh, it's, uh, and also, oh yeah, I've got to keep doing it. And this is, you know, this has been my learning of, um, just whatever it looks like, just, just do it, you know, and it doesn't have to, oh, another tractor going past. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I'm. I'm just trying to embrace the chaos and to kind of do it anyway, you know. Yeah. And um, one of the the shows that I've been doing is it's called um, Secrets of the Blue Stockings, which the, the Blue Stockings were the um, the first female literary salon, so they were the kind of the first women to openly read and you know uh, be educated and. Um, and then the show is about them and about other really amazing trailblazing women. And one of the songs in the show is is called um, Hysterical. And this, uh, you know, this 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 uh, thing that men used to, well, I say used to, but potentially still do, um, this this idea that women were hysterical and were actually kind of, you know, a bit mad. And... Um, that, that the, the womb could actually move around the body. This was something that used to be believed, that the, the womb could travel around the body and that, you know, women were, uh, yeah, the, the first women's um, college in um, Cambridge, Girton College, doubled up as a lunatic asylum. So that some of the college was for women to study and some of the college was for, for crazy, apparently crazy women. Uh, utter bonk, just bonkers. Wow! So we have this song called Hysterical, and um, it's the most kind of. When I've done the show, we've done it a few times now since I've had this one, and we get really hysterical <laughs> in this song, and it's such a kind of oh, 
such a lovely uh, expression of kind of how I'm feeling, of like to be able to release that energy of oh my god, and yeah, uh, yeah this is just wonderful because it, yeah, it, gosh, it, it, we just. Oh, sorry, I'm not being very coherent. I'm feeling this one at the same time. Yeah, I'm just not holding it all together. I think that's my my main oh, my main thing now is to just to be okay with the chaos and the messiness and the um, yeah. The, the beautiful chaos. imperfection of of humanity and of this season in your life yeah. too, where you have interrupted sleep and you are building a human still i mean you built him inside your tummy and now you feed him with your body and you're building a human like okay you can't you're not stringing every sentence together right to the end as much as you might want it to be perfect but frankly it's working fine for us on this end of it hi baby yeah if you're listening it really is a good idea to go to the youtube channel if you you look at the show notes, you'll be able to find the YouTube link. And look at sweet little guy. Oh, Lila, he's perfect. So one last question for you too, actually. So one is um, one that might require a little bit of thought and the other one will require no thought. So no, no need to worry. The first one is the podcast is called Mama Fuel. And I always ask all of my guests, where do you get your Mama Fuel? And I think I know the answer, but often I'm surprised. So where do you get your Mama Fuel? Um, oh, partly, I think partly kind of um, literally fueling, so um, trying to eat well, <laughs> <laughs> and partly from like I was really inspired by your um, like your <laughs> your your, your um, intention with the, the Mama Project of of kind of creating community, and um, I'm. I think being around others and not isolating and kind of, um, you know, calling on others uh, that I find is really powerful fuel, you know, for, for me. Um, yeah. Of not trying to do everything myself, but just, um, you know, someone walks through the door, hand over the baby, like, <laughs> sit down for once uh, and just not try and, yeah, not try and kind of, do it all and that's mm. been um yeah that really fuels me and to support others in that as well you know to really kind of try and rebuild community and that sense of tribe you know and um mm. you know and just really it's just oh just supporting each other um yeah yeah uh yeah is it is enormously um powerful fuel because otherwise how else you know gosh how else do you do it you can't you can't do it all yeah oh, it's, it's, and we shouldn't we shouldn't have to I feel really strongly about that okay your little guy is no. such a show stealer look at how gorgeous he is you really should go and check out the YouTube conversation that we're having or the Hi. conversation we have once it's on YouTube um so my last question is if people are curious to know about the shows that you've done, the performances that you've got coming up for the listeners who are in the UK or maybe lucky people who are traveling there this summer or in through the fall, or who knows, this is being recorded the 4th of June, 2018. We'll be running it in a few weeks. Maybe someone's listening to you in 2020 and they want to see you. <laughs> Where can they find you? Uh, through uh, my website, which is leelabunce.com. And also my uh, my laughter website is shinetime.co.uk. So there's loads of stuff on there about all the yeah strange things that I do. Yeah. Love it. Okay, well, I will link both to leelabunce.com and to, I'm just scribbling, .com and to Shine Time. And um, what's the next show that you're doing? Uh, the next one is at the uh, Shaftesbury Fringe Festival, uh, which is in um, down here. It's in Dorset, uh, which is Secrets of the Blue Stockings, which I'm really looking forward to. I find that incredibly nourishing to show to. I love doing shows about amazing women and uh, you know telling their stories. All of my my recent shows have been about yeah, been about amazing women because my goodness, there's so many of them, and, and and through history, their their stories haven't been told enough, and so on. Mm keen to tell them yeah 
Mm, Well, thank you for that. Thank you so much for spending this time with me and to your beautiful little man. Thank you for sleeping through this gorgeous boy. (laughs) You've been really helpful. I know. Good timing. Oh, it's been lovely to connect, Leela. Thank you so much. And thank you for having this conversation. We'll talk soon. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Mama Fuel, the podcast with the beautiful Leela Bunce. The permission to be real and the permission to be flawed and the permission to be honest is there. It is here. If you need a magic wand of permission to be real and raw and honest in your life about the good, the bad, and everything in between, then this is it. You've got it. And if you don't need it and you're doing it anyway, I celebrate you because the world needs more honesty and needs more laughter and needs more release. And talking to Leela was such a great opportunity to bring all of these things to the fore. I also wanted to invite you, if you haven't been there already, to go to the centeredmamaproject.com forward slash illuminate. I am preparing a very small group program and I would love you to join us. In this program called Illuminate, I'm inviting you to step out of the shadows of your life where you may have been hiding out as you do your absolute utmost to love and care for your incredible children. And in doing so, you may have gone into the wings of your life, into the darkness where people are constantly bumping into you and there's not a lot of space and it's kind of stuffy and the air isn't great. I am so excited to lead a small group of women out on to center stage to bring you back into the middle of your life and to encourage you to shine as big and bold, as bright as your soul is crying out for you to do in ways that go beyond motherhood because you were a whole person before you became a mama and you are still a whole person now and those other parts of you are calling out for your attention. If you're interested and would like to hear more, please go to thecenteredmamaproject.com forward slash illuminate and pop your information into that page and I will send you any information that I have as soon as it is ready. I'm working on it right now. But I really wanted to invite you in because I'm going to be accepting six to eight mamas into this group and maybe one of those spots is yours. Looking forward to hearing from you, to seeing you pop up on that list and wishing you a gorgeous week. Bye-bye. That's it for today's episode of Mama Fuel, the podcast. Thanks for listening. There's a lot more conversation, sharing and real mama talk happening in our private Facebook group. To join us, go to www.thecenteredmamaproject.com forward slash Facebook and make sure you say hi when you get there. If you like this episode, or if you know a mama who could use a little mama fuel, I'd love you to share this episode and to rate and leave a review. Every comment helps, and it is always a delight to hear from you. Thanks, and bye for now.